Well, for anyone who's watched my channel for a little bit of time probably knows that I don't tend to swear an awful lot. When I do, it's normally when something momentously good has happened or alternatively when something momentously bad has happened. And that, you know, it's just for you know, that gravitas, giving it a little bit more meaning. So my words after the transfer window that I have just experienced, my description of it, Holy fuck. Hello folks, welcome to episode one of the fifth season at RFC Liège. We were all set, last time I said, if we could keep this team together, we were all set to give the top of the division a run for our money. We could win this league, or at least push for those playoffs. We had a good squad, we had some decent defenders, we had a good midfield and a decent strike force. We just needed to keep what we had together. Now obviously we had a problem with that because we were basing a lot of our team on low knees. And you heard last time that De Vilder, our left winger, who was very, very good, he didn't want to come back. Um, and that has remained. Couldn't get him back. He was not interested in returning. We also knew that Babacar Lea um, was our forward, very, very good forward. Scored a lot of goal for, goals for us. Uh, was, I think, third top scorer in the league. His contract was up, so we were going to have to see whether we could get him back. And we also knew that our left back, uh, Adam Nicholas, who we'd gone through the uh, the youth team, we'd brought him up, nurtured him to the brilliant four, four and a half star left back that he was now. He had decided to leave, refused to sign a contract and had uh, signed one a pre contract with Club Bruges and we were getting nothing for it. Yeah. What's made matters worse, he is playing at Club Bruges NXT, isn't he? Because they've pushed him down into their bloody reserves. So that's fun, isn't it? So we'll be going up against um, Adam Nicholas next time around. So we knew all that was going to be difficult. What I didn't expect was what happened. Right, now let's go and have a check on those bloody transfers. We'll start off with players who have gone out and also those who've come in. Uh, so this is the end of last season. You can see we lost Adam Nicholas. We knew that he'd gone to, um, he'd gone to uh, Club Bruges. Kevin Jomo, if you remember him, he played right back for a little bit. Wasn't particularly great. He has gone to RFCB Spiramont, and I wish him all the best. And then we'd lost a couple of these reasonably good youngsters, 17-year-old. You know, he's got some pace there. You know, you could maybe do something with this guy, but we've got so much there, I wasn't worried about that. Tony Glavas, I was a little bit more annoyed about because he looks like someone who could be developed quite well, but he had no interest in signing a new contract. But you can see here on the ins, Babacar Lea joined the club on, and we are paying a little bit of money here, 2.3 uh, thousand pounds per week, but, and it, we've got him on a two year contract, but he scores goals. So that is worth, he, he's worth his weight in goal. And as you can see in the cup game, he's already scored a couple. So that's, that's a pretty good start. So on the face of it, all this is looking good. Let's, uh, let's move on. Right then, players who have left. Now, all of these players that you see are basically because a club came in, and we'd, we'd not had anyone come in for these players. They're all, you know, they sniffed around but not been too interested. So, let's start with Nathan Rodez. He had a one, well, we actually got a little bit more than his £100,000 release clause. He wanted to leave because Mutacron was coming in for him and they were now going to be in the top league. Uh, so he has he has left and you look at him and he's worth three times as much up there. Would be a very good signing for us. Of course he would because he was a great player. So we've lost our captain or our vice captain, Nathan Rodez, basically because of a, a release clause and our, our board just said yes. We've lost our two centre-backs. <laughs> Kakudja has gone to New York. And Simon Vert has gone to uh, Vaslan Bever, and so another top division side. 
and it both the, the situation was absolutely identical in both of these that I said no they can't go uh, they got they kicked up a fuss you know these people are influential people in the dressing room I basically got the warning well if you do this then you're probably going to have a dip in morale so it's you know you were you were stuck you had to do it and yeah so we lost those two uh, and Roman Bodin I promised him when a a decent offer came in because I'd already refused one when an offer comes in I was going to have to let him go and Muscron paid up for him and another brilliant brilliant player and they've got a great couple of signings there I cannot believe that we have lost these two superstars and you can see started already for them okay we've got add-ons and okay we've got sell-on fees and all that sort of stuff but yeah frustrated and you can see we've had a real trouble replacing them with actual permanent players we've again relied completely on loans and we'll be mainly relying on our youth system so let's have a look who we have bought in this one is a really good one i think again from andalect uh noah sadiki who is a central midfielder he's going to give us a little bit more in the center of midfield um and as Rodez is leaving, he is a perfect replacement for Rodez. Um, so I don't think we're going to lose. I, th I think it's a, it's actually an upgrade. Look at the passing. Look at the first touch. He is a good, good player. So that, that's a good one. Martin Arida, who is another midfielder. Obviously, we, we lost... Um, we've also lost other players. Why? Yeah, so there are other players who have left as well. Oh, here we go. Finally. Yes. Yes. Other players who have gone. So Debati has gone. Dostilio, Lucas Gierd, Kaveya, uh, Mariotta and Uganek. Uga, yeah, the Polish guy. So you can see the squad is much, much smaller. We don't have all of those kind of hangers on hangers on us. We are going to be using our youth team a lot more than we were. So, yeah. So Martin Arida, you can see, decent midfielder. He's again, he's there for backup. We'll bring him in and out. I think he's going to do a good job on loan from Ado Den Haag. You can see that uh, he's not as good as many of the players we've had in there, but he's certainly not a terrible player. Decent passing and, and, and a reasonable vision, and these are things we quite like in our midfielders, central midfielders, so that is good. Player I forgot to mention is striker, because I didn't think I was getting Babacar Leo back, so we brought this guy in, who is going to be a very, very nice backup for, for Babacar Leo. Um, fast, decent finishing, decent jump in reach, uh, and decent pace, so he is going to provide a threat in the box which we don't normally have he's a bit of a you know i don't get how he can be so tall and i guess he's more of a peter crouch type figure you can't be that fast and that tall and not have strength surely surely that's impossible but he he you know he he lives on being impossible you might recognize this guy obviously we've lost our two center backs so what we did do is bring back this lad uh, Ibe Houtkeet, who is the guy we had on loan last season who couldn't break in and get past Vert and Kakudja, which I might tell you a little bit, but he's a decent player. And he may have only not broken in because they just formed such a good partnership. So that, you know, I'm, I'm not disappointed with that. I was pleased to be able to get him. And I think the fact he was here last season is probably going to help in terms of the morale because he already knows many of the players. Another player you'll know, uh, Demo Koida, who was here at the end of last season. Um, he's going to provide cover on the left side, or maybe even be a first first choice on the left side, but he can also play in the centre as a ball-playing defender. So, and as, as we are playing ball for playing defenders, and he's pretty fast. As I said last time, he does a lot of things very, very well, but he's just not particularly... Well, he's quite tall, isn't he? He's reasonably tall, not particularly good at the defending. <laughs> but, you know, I think he's. I think he, he will do well. So, obviously, we're also missing the left side. That's a big problem, isn't it? Because we don't have our... Um, we don't have uh, De Vilda and we've lost uh, Asante, both of whom could play on that left side. So, this guy is on loan from Milan. He's primarily a forward, but if you look at him, he can play on the left side and he's got everything you need to be pretty good there, I think. Uh, pace, 
acceleration agility all those sort of things he can dribble with it maybe he's lacking a little bit of passing ability and we'll, we'll see about that but i think he's a decent player to come in uh, for that so obviously we are missing uh, our roman bowden character so the player I've bought in, and we did get a little bit of transfer budget to, to do this, uh, Arun Lennertz from Patro Eisen, who just got promoted. He can play anywhere across the middle, all the way up top, and he's not as good as Roman Bodin, but um, he's a reasonable player, and I think he'll do a job there. I think he will do a, a pretty good job. Obviously, Patro Eisen got themselves promoted last season, and you look how well he played last year it's you know he had a very good set of seasons with that team so um you know scored scored a bunch of goals for them so potentially we can make the most of that and finally in sort of late on right at the end of the transfer window i bought in i was looking for, right bringing a left back and uh, somebody else tika jong uh, and again this lad three and a half star he can play on the left side the right side in the middle up front he's, he's basically the asante figure from last season so hopefully he can he's not as good as asante but we're not paying him well we actually probably are we're not paying quite as much as asante uh, but we're paying him a fair chunk of money um so that is where we are financially you can see we are way under the budget which is great but obviously this is something that we're going to have to deal with um the the board are keep putting money in the new this new board to, to keep us afloat which is great um and obviously we have we've actually you know had about a million pounds in transfer but uh, transfer earnings there so that's also very good so all that has gone through and let's have a little look at the league these are the teams that we're going to be up again we're playing lommel uh, today a team that we've beaten in the past season preview looks like this we are fourth in the season preview i don't think that takes into account the things that have just happened um i'm not sure where we are really at the minute but hopefully we're somewhere we're 15 to 1 with Mechelen, the team that are odds on to win the league and patronized and odds on to go back down so we should be fine we should be able to push union um and lommel for that second place hopefully but i don't know i don't really believe it at the minute let me know what you think of the transfers the crazy transfer window and what you do in situations like that when the players are saying well actually i want to go to a bigger club can you stand in their way without that screwing up the whole team especially when it's really important players within the team in terms of um, the team dynamics I, I can't see how you can do it but let me let me know in the in the in the comments what your experiences are of of that are right then bit of a long one sorry but you know <laughs> things happened you know let's have a look a look at the team report it often gives you the best sort of idea of where we are in terms of squad depth this was looking pretty terrible on the left side until fairly recently um as you can see uh jimenez is still here the uh, the colombian uh, cigar he can play on both sides so he's certainly someone to to think about and and the greek lad as well but I was slightly worried about having to play him. And now we've got two people who can play there. So we've got a lot of options. Uh, left back is a bit of a problem. Ali Cisse is going to be our, our left back there. But one of the things that I am looking to do is bring through Diogo, our youngster. I don't know if you remember him. 16-year-old Brazilian. Looks absolutely amazing. So the plan is to give him a lot of starts. Okay, let's go forward. I will come back for the start of the Lommel game. Can we do this? I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Right then, so our first team that we're going out with is Lea up top. Very, very happy to have him up there. We have Stassin on the left side, our new left-sided player. In the centre, we've got Lennartz. I've got Ed Taibi on the right. Midfielder Sana is buddying up with Sadiki. Um, which I think is going to be a very strong central defensive partnership. And at the back, it is all change. We have Koida is playing at left back, Hoytkit and Diogo playing as centre backs with Kastan at the right. Gofan is in goal. And the bench, I mean, I mean, it's interesting what the bench looks like. We've got some decent low knees on there. We've got Mahu, we've got Sprout, we've got Cisse. And you look beyond that there's very very little we've got a bunch of youngsters beyond that all of whom will be getting games so hopefully this season will be a massive season for development of this team if we can push that with also a reasonably successful season 
we're all going to be very happy. Let's do it. I have no idea. Oh, no, not quite. What I didn't show you, <laughs> what I didn't show you before we go on. This is the pre-season. We've actually had some reasonable results. We beat STVV, who are in the top division, 3-1. That was a nice result. Lea got a couple, and our Greek lad, a draw with Hellman from uh, Holland. And then we lost to Fiorentina, lost to Verona. And then our um, first round or fifth round Belgian Cup game, we won 5-0. Lea with a couple, Asana with one, uh, uh, Calcutta. Uh, the striker and Linnert, the Bodan replacement, finishing off with with a plum, a 5-0 victory. Very, very nice. But Lommel will be a different test. I don't know quite what we are going to expect here. I'm, I'm a bit worried, to be honest. I think we, we've, we've messed this team up massively. I haven't shown you the team dynamics. I can't remember what that looks like. I didn't think it was too messed up last time I looked. But considering we keep changing things left, right, and center, it probably is by now. Right. Tika De Jong on deadline day. Uh, of course, it can be tempting. I tried to get another one in. We've got a three, a three match unbeaten, game, unbeaten run against Lommel. Um, I don't know. I don't think that's going to matter today. It's a complete random side. This could go anyway. I have no idea about this, guys. So uh, let me know your thoughts, if anything. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, we want to demand more from the off. Lom will start with a, uh, a shot. Well, we had one as well. So it's not as bad as I thought. I was worried that we might get absolutely taken to the cleaners. But we've got Diogo, the youngster at the back. That's a pretty terrible ball there from the guy who's supposed to be the best player in the team. Bossier, Toure. That's a nice ball there. Oh, dear. Oh, come on. He makes the tackle and they still get it back. Uh, I'm not happy about that. I felt we were a bit unlucky there. Let's have a look at that one again and see what we did wrong. Toure, and that's nicely done. The, I mean, goes in early there, but it's this tackle here that is very unlucky. He got the ball and he just didn't take it off him. So, I mean, they only, we've had some shots. They've had some shots. So it would be nice to see one of our shots. Linertz, he loses the ball after turning like an oil tanker and Sow's got it. And we've managed to pull that off. But again, we can't find the forwards. And we've... <laughs> Is this going to be a bit of a problem? Looks like the ball over the top is causing us some trouble here. Come on, boys. Yet to see a shot on the uh, on the highlights, which is... That's not what I like to see so much. A draw would be fine. Just a shot would be fine. And we've been a bit unlucky, I feel, with how things have gone there. We look, we look all right. We've got players who we can bring on. I wonder whether we do make a change. Stassin looks ropey. We've got players to come on there. Do we bring De Jong on the right side? So a proper winger, as opposed to Ed Taibbi, he's more of a left, a right back. Is that gonna help? Well, another chance it looks like for us, but we haven't managed to make one of these chances. Dijonga, and the ball's gone left to Kuida. Asania, he doesn't get the shot away. It's Diogo. He does make the pass. Nicely done from Diogo. Is this still another chance? Well, ball is played behind. It's Dijonga. Oh, what a save. And that was, an, well, maybe he should have put it away, but it was a good, good save from the... Uh, from the Lommel goalkeeper. Hmm. I'm going to go attacking and we'll just move him up to on attack, I think. We can get a little bit more out of him. I thought we're taking Stassin off. Apparently not. Um, I don't know. Reader. wide target man on attack we'll do that go on lads can we create a chance Siddiqui well, the ball is cleared it's Stassen he has got it he's trying to run down this left side this is 
dangerous, dangerous territory. Asania. We have lost it. And as I say, dangerous territory. We, oh, dear me. Le Mans. <laughs> it's a god uh, penalty. And if you've been watching this series last season, we were the gods of giving away penalties. We must have given away about 20 penalties last year. So we come through this game and I sort of feel that we have at least given a good account of ourselves. Lommel have been better in front of goal, but we know we've got people who can score goals. So actually XG wise, we created a reasonable amount of chances, but we haven't done the, made the most of them. I think that's the, the outcome there. We've got a lot of players who need to figure out how to to win matches, so maybe we just need to play a team who may be a little bit more effective than, or not quite as good as the Lommel side, <laughs> and just need a ball to go in the back of the net. Asania probably should have scored there. Diogo here. Castan. Diogo looks like he was tripping over the ball. It's a lovely ball there. It's Kakulta. Oh dear me. And we get we're getting done on the break fairly effectively, aren't we? And not picking up not picking things up. 2 0 seems harsh though. That's nicely done. Found the man. And it's offside. I'm not entirely sure what that was all about. So Certainly not going to change things up too much. I think maybe the people, the actual personnel, may need to change around a little bit to find the optimum set of players. But it's a, I'm two nil. It didn't feel like a two nil. We, um, I mean, Stassen obviously did not have a good game on the left side, and maybe De Jong maybe a better fit there. We'll see. Um, but obviously that 1.5 xG is massively. Um, upgraded by the penalty they had obviously without that it wouldn't have been such a such a uh, an easy uh, win in terms of xg for them so i'm not too disappointed it's disappointing to lose the game as always but there's plenty to give ourselves heart there we just don't want to go on a crappy run like we did at the start of last season that's all i need to avoid so let's have a look what the media think about that and they'll probably say this was terrible we should have done a lot better um, as long as we don't get a load of people injured I think we should be all right I think we play quite well uh, I don't really want to answer that question so bugger off you yeah we got Belgian Cup sixth round so I think that's an opportunity there uh, right, let's have a look at where we are here. Let's come back for the patronised in game. That's clearly one that we want to. Not the Club Bruges. We we know what we can do against Club Bruges. We've got Dines up next, who you know we should be able to give a decent game. These two games aren't going to be easy, but I hope to be able to get something. And then the patronised in game. I really hope that we'll get something out of that. Anyway, guys, if you have enjoyed this, hit that like button. Please subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you next time as we uh, hopefully have a better start than I'm than I hope that I'm sort of thinking we might end up with but let me know in the comments what you think thank you very much goodbye